Welcome back everyone to Learning by Teaching, we're in aesthetics and today we're going to do problem 7.7, 7, okay? So now we move to a different chapter and in this chapter we're going to focus on solving what will be the internal forces on structures or trusses, okay? So for example here they're asked to find the internal forces at my point C, okay? So let's read what the problem says. Determine the internal shear force and moment acting at point C in the beam. Okay, so we got our beam that is pin connected at A, it has a roller at B, and it has this triangular distributed load. Now, we want to know what's the internal forces at my point Z. So in order to solve for this problem, we're going to apply it a similar, which is basically the same as the method of section, where we're going to section our part at C, okay? But first, let's just draw, uh, draw a free body diagram. So F B D of my part. So how will it look? My part will look something like we will have at A, since we have at A we have a pin connection, we will have at AY. We will also have an AX. And then at B we have a roller, therefore we're going to have a BY. And last, we're going to have a distributed load. So our distributed load is going to be the area under that triangular large shape. So if we want to know how much that is, well, we will find out that this force, I'm just going to call it triangle in here, will be the area of a triangle. So it will be one half the base, so 6 times the height, which will be 4. And this will give us 12 kips, okay? So now we know that this value over here is 12 kips. All we need to add into this free body diagram are how far away is my 12 kips with respect to my point 8, which will be one third from the longest side of my base. So if my base is 6 and I need, uh, I apologize, I said one third is two thirds from the smallest side and one third from the longest so it will be from point a it will be four because it's two thirds okay from of my base so we got four and then since the entire beam is 12 so we got eight feet in here okay we got eight feet and eight feet i'm gonna mark my point z in the middle which will be around here and this will be my point z this is point B, obviously, and point A. Now, we're going to leave this free body diagram in here on the side. And what we're going to do is apply the method of section. So we're going to section this here. And then if we section this at my point C, we got to say, hey, on which side should I work? Should I work on my left side or my right side? And as you guys can see from now, from the last chapter, my right side has only one unknown. It doesn't even have these 12 kilo pounds in here. So let's just work. So we're going to call this, we're gonna section it in here. And I'm going to call it AA. So we're going to do a free body diagram of AA. And then I'm gonna choose the right side. Okay, so if we do that, then what do we have? Well, in here I'll have my point B. This in here will be my point C. Now, since I'm applying the method of section, when you section one member, like one beam like this, what you will end up with is that you will have a normal force that we're going to call it NC. We will have a shear force that we're going to call it BZ. And we're going to have a moment internal moment that we're going to call it mc okay and then after this we apply our summatory forces and moments and we find everything else like we always do on aesthetics okay so if we assume going to the right is positive for my forces in the x direction what do we have oh we can say that nc is the only force i have in the x direction so therefore this is equal to zero Next, if we assume that 
going up is positive and we apply the sumatorial forces in the y direction what will we have i apologize because in this one in here i'm forgetting my py okay that's all i we had for our um, right side so we will have positive bc because it's going up and positive by and all this should be equal to zero so if we solve for bc this should be equal to negative by next if we do the summatorial moments and we say that going counterclockwise is positive and if we do it around my point c so we cancel nc we cancel bc so we're only left with by and mc so around c we'll have mc is going clockwise so i'm going to put a negative and then by if i'm holding here we we'll want to rotate my part counterclockwise so i'll have positive by multiplied by the distance so what is the distance between my point c and point b is from here to here it's given in our main um, drawing so we have six feet and all this should be equal to zero okay solving for mc we will get that this is equal to six times by okay now all we need to find is by so we know bz and we know mc okay that's why we got this guy over here so our big free body diagram and if we apply a zomatory of moment around my point a in here we will cancel ax cancel ay all we have is this guy and this guy and again we are going to assume that going counterclockwise is positive so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to start working a little bit below just to have a little bit more room to write on so let's do it in here okay what is this equal to well let's just start with holding here and having my 12 kilopounds we want to rotate me clockwise so I'll have negative 12 multiplied by the distance so our four feet so four and then we'll have holding here this by going like this will rotate me counterclockwise, we'll have positive by multiplied by 12 feet, okay? All this should be equal to zero. I have nothing else to create in the moment. So we can cancel out 12 on 12, so 12. And if we solve for by, we will realize that by is equal to positive 4 kilopounds okay so now that we know by then we can solve for the internal shear force so will be equal to negative four kips so this is my shear internal shear force at point z and then my moment at c will be equal to six times four that will give me 24 kilopounds okay Thank you guys for watching if you guys liked the video please push the like button subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one